Verlink has just released two brand new cameras, the Elite Floodlight Wi-Fi and the Elite X Pro PoE. On paper, they look almost identical. Both are dual lens 4K camera with 180 degrees field of view, smart detection, and local storage. The difference comes down to Wi-Fi versus PoE, whether you want a floodlight or spotlight, or 8 megapixel versus 16 megapixel camera. But what really caught my attention is a new feature called perimeter protection and advanced motion tracking. Now this adds customizable alarms like line crossing, zone intrusion, and loitering alerts, letting you create smart targeted deterrence. For me, that's what makes these cameras stand out. So are either of these cameras worth installing? Let's find out. Hey guys and welcome back to the channel, Ty here and this is Ty the Space. Now let's go ahead and unbox both cameras and see what's inside the box. The box contents are very different because these cameras mount and power in completely different ways. Inside the Elite Floodlight box you find the pre-assembled floodlight camera, a mounting bar, a mounting bracket with a built-in level, screws, silicone plugs for sealing it up and a USB-C setup cable. The Elite X Pro camera on the other hand contains the camera, mounting screws, ethernet patch cords and a weather seal. Installing these two cameras are very different because one is PoE and the other is wired directly to 120 volts. For the Elite X Pro, I mounted it to the soffit of my house using a real link junction box. I routed the ethernet cable into the junction box and then connected it to the camera and then attach the camera to the junction box. You can also mount it flat against the wall with just screws. Once powered up through PoE, I scanned the QR code that's located underneath the camera and it showed up right within my Reolink app. Adjusting the orientation is simple. Loosen the lock, aim it where you want it to be and then tighten it back down. Simple and easy. For the Elite Floodlight, it can either replace an existing light fixture or it can be mounted to any surface. The mounting process for installing it to a junction box is just like any standard light fixture. First, I attach the mounting bar to my octagon box. The screws didn't quite line up perfectly, so I had to place the bar at a slight angle. Then, the mounting bracket attaches to that bar. Now, this bracket has a built-in level which makes it easy to get the floodlight straight. Now with the bracket in place, I used the included mounting hook to hang the camera which kind of freed up both of my hands to allow me wire up this camera. Now talking about wiring, I connected the line neutral and ground using wiggle connectors to their corresponding wires on my junction box and then I tucked them away to the back of the junction box. After that, I secured the camera to the bracket using the provided screws and then finally sealed the gap using the silicone plugs. Now this process is quite similar if mounting it to any surface. It can be powered up using an adapter cable which can be purchased separately on Reolink's website. So you can plug it directly to a regular 15 amp outlet. Reolink also includes a wrench which can be used to loosen the camera and adjust the camera angle. Normally, you'd set up the camera up first with the provided USB-C cable before physically installing this camera, but I skipped this step. Instead, I wired it up fully and completed my physical installation and then came back to do the app setup. As soon as I powered up the camera and I scanned the QR code again underneath the camera, the camera showed up right away within my Reolink app. On paper, these two cameras look similar, but the specs show that they are aimed at different use cases. The Elite X Pro PoE is one of Reolink's highest resolution dual lens camera with a 1 over 1.8 CMOS sensor for an excellent low light performance. It also shoots in 16 megapixel, which is 7680 by 2160, essentially double the detail of a standard 4K 8 megapixel camera. It also has a 180 degree wide view with a 59 degree vertical field of view and also records at up to 20 frames per second. For night vision, it uses six infrared LED lights that reaches about 30 meters plus three small spotlights that adds additional 150 lumens for a colored night vision. Now, power comes from either PoE using a PoE capable switch, a Reolink NVR, 
a PoE injector or a 12 volt DC adapter and you can also add up to 512 gigabit micro SD card for local storage. Now this applies to both of the cameras in terms of storage. The x basically builds on the dual PoE but with upgraded smart detection features, motion tracking and of course the Color X night vision. The Elite Floodlight Pro on the other hand builds on the dual floodlight with the same 1 over 2.7 CMOS sensor, an 8 megapixel camera, 20 FPS recording and the 180 degrees horizontal field of view but with slightly higher resolution of 5120 by 1552 as opposed to the 4608 by 1728 of the dual. It also comes with a much higher lumen brightness of 3000 which is temperature adjustable none of which is available on the Duo. Both the Elite Floodlight Pro and the Elite X Pro come with a built-in speaker and microphone giving you a full two-way talk. Now that means you can communicate directly through the camera using the Reolink app, whether it's speaking directly to delivery persons or what enough intruders. Now both cameras support open standards like Unviv, LTSP and LTMP which lets you integrate them into other smart home platforms like Home Assistant or NVR systems like Freegate or even Unify Protect. Now this is great if you don't want to rely solely on the Reolink app for daily monitoring. Within Home Assistant, all the entities are exposed which can be used for various advanced automation. Any perimeter protection created within the Reolink app will also show up as an entity in Home Assistant. So you can use them for other automations like turning on your sprinkler if someone steps on the lawn. You can also control all the other entities as well. You can even archive footages directly to your NAS or an FTP server remotely. For smart home integration, they both work with Google and Amazon, so you can view live feeds on devices like your Nest Hub or your Echo Show device. The X Pro is IP67 rated while the Elite is IP66. The difference between both of them is the fact that the X Pro supports submersion in water for a short period of time while the Elite doesn't. They are both rated for between negative 10 degrees Celsius up to plus 55 degrees. Although in Alberta, Canada where I stay, we get upwards of negative 30 degrees in the winter, so negative 10 is like summer. My dual floodlight has survived negative 40 degrees weather for multiple consecutive days, especially last season without any issues. So I have no doubt that this one would be fine for the upcoming winter season. But again, only time will tell. And both cameras are also equipped with a negative 150 decibel siren which can be used as an alarm. The Elite Floodlight supports three main modes, always on as the name implies, always on. A time mode which allows you to set a custom time in which the light will stay on. And finally, the auto mode that automatically adapts the brightness based on ambient lighting conditions for an optimal night vision. You can also adjust both the brightness and the color temperature to match the look you want. It ranges from 3000 Kelvin all the way up to 6500 Kelvin for that daylight white look. At night time, you can run the camera with just the infrared, but the image will be just black and white. But if you turn on the floodlight, then you can actually get a colored footage recording as well. One of the biggest updates in the Reolink app specific to just these two cameras is a new category of alarm setting called perimeter protection and advanced motion tracking. The perimeter adds three powerful detection modes, line crossing, zone intrusion and zone lowering. The line crossing alert lets you draw a virtual line on your camera feed. Anytime motion crosses that line, you can trigger a push notification, a siren or both. You can fine tune it to only react to people, vehicles, animals or all motion and you can schedule when it is active, for example, only overnight. The zone intrusion alert works similarly as well, but instead of a line, you actually draw out a specific area you want monitored. Again, you get the full control over the detection type, siren, push notifications and schedule. Personally, I've been dealing with dogs leaving surprises on my lawn, so I've set up my grass as a monitored zone. 
If an animal or a person enters, the camera plays a custom recorded audio message telling them to get off my lawn. The only quirk I noticed is when I save a drawn zone, it doesn't line up perfectly with what I traced out. My guess is it has to do with how the camera stretches its ultra wide resolution. The third option is zone lottering. Instead of just detecting entry, it monitors how long an object or a person stays in a zone. If they linger past the time limits that you have set, the siren or the notification trigger will essentially kick in. The advanced motion tracking analyzes a footage with motion and shows the path in which that object has taken within that recording. Now this feature is processor heavy and can take some time to analyze. This can be especially useful if you want to see the path a person took or an animal took within a footage. This can help with investigations. So who should get these cameras? It really depends on what you need. The Elite X Pro PoE is all about the details. It shoots in 16 megapixel and with its 1 over 1.8 CMOS sensor combined with its Color X night vision, you get full color images even in low light. If it's completely dark, the small built-in spotlight helps keep the color. This camera is great if you want maximum detail, parameter protection alerts, and the reliability of wired PoE connection. Just be aware though, higher resolution uses more bandwidth. So in areas with weaker network performance, you might see slow loading or occasional disconnections. The Alice Floodlight Pro is different. It is 4K, 8 megapixel camera and has a 3000 lumen adjustable floodlight. Now that means your yard, driveway or courtyard can actually be fully lit and you get colored night vision as well when the light is on. This one is perfect if you want security lighting and a clear view of your property. I'm also not a fan of the Reolink app. My experience with it has been inconsistent. I find my feeds are sometimes slow to load and sometimes would not even load up at all. These devices also don't support reach notification through the Reolink app. So you have to open up the app every time to see who is on your driveway. If you rely on it for day to day use, it could be a little bit frustrating, at least based on my experience. The good news is both cameras support on Viv, RTSP and RTMP. I use mine within the Unified Protect system and it works flawlessly. I also find it strange that in 2025, the X Pro, especially with its 16 MP camera, still comes with a 100 meg ethernet port when even printers come with standard one gig ports these days. You will get better performance out of the Elite Floodlight camera since it supports Wi-Fi 6 protocol. Now, both cameras have different use cases and features. If lighting up a space is important, then you should consider the Elite Floodlight. But if monitoring is more important, then the X-Pro is actually worth considering. I'll leave links to both products down in the description if you want to check them out. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, Leave them down in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer all the questions as well. That pretty much concludes my review of both products and make sure to like, share, subscribe and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ty, peace out.